Look what I made. I made all this and you can too. I'm going to show you the easy peasy recipes for all this delicious food. These are some of my favorite recipes that are so simple you're actually going to make them. I call this almost homemade because you do make it at home, but some of the ingredients that you can buy pre-made if you choose to. And it just makes it a little bit faster. A pie crust, for instance, if you don't want to make a homemade pie crust, but you do want to make a homemade pie, you can buy a decent crust in the store and just use that. So there are some ingredients that you can pick up while you're shopping and just keep them in the house. And then you can put this stuff together. I'm going to show you how. Let's get cooking. If you want some tangy, cheesecakey goodness that's really refreshing, you will love this recipe. And okay, so what you do is you start with cream cheese. I like to get the Greek cream cheese because it's high in protein and just seems a little better. You know, whatever choice you can make to go healthy, go to the healthy side, just try to do that. You need a can of pineapple tidbits. And what I'm going to do is just pour the juice of the pineapple in here. So I'm going to mix this. I'm just going to take a few minutes and mix this cream cheese into the liquid from the pineapple. It does surprisingly dissolve fast though. This is a family recipe that my grandmother used to make when we were little. She'd come and visit from Chicago to our house and she'd always stay at least a month or so. <laughs> it was never a quick visit. Of course, we loved it. We just like swarmed all over her and she would make this for us when she was there several times, you know, through the month she'd make this for everybody. This is the longest part of the recipe and just, just look at it as a little exercise. It's healthy for you. You can see it gets nice and creamy and it doesn't take long at all. So next you're going to take the True Whip. We like the True Whip because we don't like hydrogenated oil. I don't think that's healthy for your body. You take the whole 10 ounce container of True Whip and you put it in the bowl. Next is a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Mmm, smells so good. We're going to put in a third of a cup of sugar. Mix this all really well. Just kind of fold it in, mix it in. And you want to mix this until you don't feel the sugar kind of gritty on the bottom. So that just takes a few minutes. It's really already quite thick. So I want to just show you when you drop it off the spoon, it just plops off there. And when you put it in the refrigerator, it firms up even more. Okay, so what you want to do now is completely drain the rest of the pineapple. You don't want any more liquid in this. So make sure this is just the fruit. If you like it really fruity, you can put the whole can in there, which I do. If not, you can just do half a can or whatever, whatever amount of pineapple you think your family likes. Okay, so then you're just going to fold this pineapple in. So yeah, it's like, give me a spoon and the whole pie and I'll just, you know, eat it. <laughs> it's how good it is. Shame, shame. I shouldn't even be talking like that. All right. So there we go. We have it all mixed up. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open this crust here. All right. So the next easy peasy, you just spoon the pie filling into the crust and just spread it out. Now this pie is a very heavy pie, heavy and heavy weight, it weighs a lot. You're going to pick this thing up and be like, oh my goodness. In the summer, this is a good pie. You know, you don't have to bake it. That's what makes it really good. You always have to have at least one recipe that's no bake, a, you know, go-to recipe that's no bake. So I just try to smooth it out really good. I like to put a little garnish on top because if you look at it, it just looks a little plain. There are a couple different ways you can go. I personally like nutmeg, so I'll put a little nutmeg on top, but a lot of people might not like that. And when you are making it for company, you gotta be careful because you don't, you know, you don't want to put something weird on there they might not like. So you can get a graham cracker and you can just crumble it up. You want to just uh, break it up enough to where you can't tell it's a graham cracker. And then I just sprinkle that on top and it just gives it a little, you know, little decoration for the top part. Ta-da! Okay, so then the next step is I put the lid on it 
and I put it in the refrigerator for like, you know, whatever, 45 minutes or an hour. If you leave it in there overnight, it does come out even more set. But like I said, you could just get a spoon and sit down and start. <laughs> All right, this is my grandma's recipe. Everybody's gonna love this recipe. It's so easy, so delicious, no bake. Grandma had the right idea with this one. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get your pumpkin left over, or you can buy it at this time of year, and to bake it so you can make fresh homemade pumpkin pie. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wash your, both your, I have two, I'm gonna, you wash your pumpkin really well in the sink, just with water. Just make sure there's no like little sand or bits or pieces on it. And then what you need is a baking dish, which I like to put a piece of par parchment paper on there, that way if anything dribbles through, it doesn't stick on my pan and burn it. So you're gonna put that on your baking dish, preheat your oven to 350, then you're gonna need a knife. And what you gotta do is you have to stab your pumpkin a few times with the knife. So be careful, don't stab yourself. But just, you know, give it a few stabs. It's very easy. So this part you probably wouldn't let the kids do. Okay, it's that simple. After that, you're done. Put it in the oven and bake it for one to one and a half hours. And how you can tell it's ready is you'll get a fork. And when the fork stabs into the pumpkin very easily, very tender, just goes right in, it's ready. Some big sweaty pumpkins. <laughs> how, about a, how about a big sweaty pumpkin? Okay, so you wanna stab it with the fork. This isn't quite done because it's not stabbing in there super easy, so I'm gonna put this back in the oven. Okay, this is what they look like when they're done. Big sweaty pumpkins, which is so funny and weird, but whatever, that's what it looks like. So the next thing you do, it's super easy, is you just get a knife and you cut it in half. And it's very hot, so be careful, it's gonna be steamy. And you just lay it open like that. And you wanna save the seeds, because we're gonna make roasted pumpkin seeds, which have a lot of magnesium in them, which is really healthy for you. You want it to cool, so now we're just gonna wait. All right, so this has been sitting for 30 minutes to cool down a bit so you can touch it, because otherwise you'll be like, woo, you can't touch it. All right, so what you wanna do now is you wanna scrape out all the seeds and do it gently though, because you don't wanna dig into the flesh. What you really want to do is just get the stringy seed part out of there. So you want to kind of be careful. It's all very soft and mushy now. And then the rest, so I'm going to do this to all four of them. I'm just going to get the seeds out of all four. Now some are more stringy than others. Like this one looks like even though I got the seeds out, there's still a little more string in there. I keep digging lightly, lightly, lightly until I get all the stringy stuff out. Only because, and I think it's just the way the pumpkin grows. Some of them just create more string while they're growing. So I will dig a little bit deeper on this one to get the string out, because I don't like strings in the pumpkin pie. Okay, so there we go. All four of them are de-seeded. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop this pumpkin into this bowl over here. And then you just get the cooked flesh. You don't get the skin. You can see if you wanted to, you could just peel the skin off like this and get it all off. Or you could just scoop it out, like whichever way it works. Sometimes the skin comes off easy and you can just do it this way. And sometimes you just scoop it out, whichever. So this way it's coming off pretty easy. If you really, really like pumpkin pie, you will be so happy with this because it tastes way better than any canned pumpkin. I'm gonna go give these scraps to the chickens, clean up a little bit, and then I'm gonna show you how I mush up the pumpkin. All right, so I just put it in the bowl and then I just beat it up like this. Now I wanna tell you something. Some people will put this in a food processor or a Nutribullet and puree it so it's like baby food. I personally don't take the time to do that because if I'm eating a piece of pie from my homemade pumpkin and I see a little string or a little piece of pumpkin, I don't care. I know it's fresh pumpkin that I just made myself. So that doesn't freak me out. I don't need it to be like baby food when I'm eating it. You need 15 ounces to make a pumpkin pie out of your homemade pumpkin that you've baked in the oven. And now I'm gonna show you how I make a pumpkin pie.
What we're gonna do is I don't even try to go in order or anything. I just put everything in a bowl, mix it up, pour it in the crust, bake it. Simple, simple, simple. You do have to know the amounts of everything though. So you have cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves if you like cloves. I use canned milk, three eggs, one can of pumpkin, and some sugar. Simple, simple. All right, I start by putting three eggs in the bowl. The reason you have to start with the eggs in the bowl first is because you wanna slightly beat those eggs up. All right, so you have the three eggs in the bowl and here's my magic mixer that I love. Isn't that a weird looking thing? It is weird looking, but it works so good. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix these up. Look how good it works. Alrighty, so you put that in there net first and then you can just go ahead, I need a spoon right here. Put the can of pumpkin in. Okay, sugar, a half a cup of sugar. I do not put a ton of sugar into my pumpkin pies. One thing that is a turn off to me, even though I love pumpkin pie, is when I take a bite of a pumpkin pie and it is so sugary sweet, all you taste is the sugar. I don't like that, so I only use a half a cup. I just use this canned milk because I don't keep milk in the house except for this canned milk. And the rest of this I'll use in my coffee when I have a cup of coffee. Since I need a cup of milk and I'm using uh, evaporated milk, I'm gonna put half a cup of evaporated milk and then the rest is water. One cup of milk. All right, so you dump that in there. I don't know if you can see in the bowl, it's just all in there, it's just. What gives your uh, pumpkin pie a nice flavor is a little bit of cinnamon. I love cinnamon, so I do a teaspoon of cinnamon. Boop. And then some people like clove. Clove is very strong. So if you're gonna put a little bit of clove in there, you want just a teeny little sprinkle. But the holes are big, so you wanna be very careful with the clove. In fact, just put it in a spoon. It even smells really strong. I'm only gonna do a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And I'm gonna shake that off. Now since the pumpkin's rather bland, be careful with your spices because if you overspice it, it's going to be like a strong pumpkin pie. Now all you have to do is mix this all up. So watch my supersonic mixer. It's going to mix it up so easy and you just go in a circle with this mixer. You don't have to like that way with a whisk where you're like, which is kind of hard to mix things up with a whisk. This thing, you just go in a circle kind of fast, back and forth a little and it just mixes it up really good. It's so handy because you don't have to have like one of those mixers, you know, in your kitchen taking up space. I'd rather have pots and pans and then just this little mixer. Okay, so I would say this is done. Now you just have to pour it in the pie crust and put it in the oven. What you can do if you don't wanna make your own crust, which is a lot of work, you can just buy a pre-made crust I always look for something when I buy pre-made, as long as it doesn't have hydrogenated oil in it or soybean oil, I, I can go with it. I can live with it because obviously I don't eat pumpkin pie too often, but you know, when you want it or when you have to make it for somebody, it's fine. Another thing though, and this is how I normally make it for myself, I don't have any crust. I will just take this mixture and get one of my pie plates, spray it with spray, cooking oil spray, and then I just dump it in there and bake it the same exact way as if it was in a crust. And it is so funny because I must say, I've had people over for lunch and I serve it to them without the crust and I still put the whipped cream on it. And after we all eat, I'll just say that, like, oh, did you like it? And they're like, oh, we loved it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it didn't even have a crust. And they have literally said, I didn't even notice. So. If you want to cut some calories or you're gluten free, you can just go ahead and do it that way with no crust at all. But for today, I have a crust. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour the pie in the crust. Preheat the oven to 450 because you're gonna pour this in here. Let me pour it in here. Then what you do is you bake it on 450 for 10 minutes. I don't know why they do that for pumpkin pie. Just to quick and get it up to heat, I guess. I don't know why. And then you turn it down to 350 and you bake it for 40 to 45 minutes. So it does take a little bit of time to make a pumpkin pie, to bake it. But I mean, whatever, you can throw it in the oven and go do something else. Just make sure you set a timer so you don't burn it. You gotta be careful though, because it's right to the tippity top. And if you bend the little pie plate, it'll run out and spill. 
Nice and easy. Okay, I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. Then I'm going to lower it down to 350 and I'm going to bake it for 45 minutes. All right, here you go. It's all finished. When you take it out of the oven, let it cool down to room temperature and then put it in the fridge to chill. And when it's ready to go, you can add your whipped cream on top. It's a super easy recipe and so delicious. I hope you give it a try. Banana nut bread's good if you don't want something too sweet and sugary like cake or you know, something just really sugary. You want, you want a little something, but you just don't want it to be too sugary and you'd like to add some fruit in there so it's healthy. So this is a great recipe for that. All right, so the first thing I do is put the eggs in because I always beat the eggs up first. And what I like to use to beat them up is this little thing on my jiggy. It's awesome because you just go in a circle and it works really good. All right, three quarters cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna mix that in. Get it all mixed in good in the egg. One teaspoon of vanilla. Mix it in a little. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the bananas in here too. I like to put all the wet ingredients. Two and a quarter cups of mashed bananas. All right, mix that up a little. A half a cup of butter, which is one stick. One teaspoon of baking soda. One teaspoon of cinnamon, yum, I love cinnamon. Cinnamon's delicious. All right, and then we're gonna do a little quarter teaspoon of salt. Do that. Two cups of flour. I like to use organic flour if I can swing it. If I have it, I can swing it when I'm buying, I'm shopping, I'll get it. All right, so now I'm gonna mix this up. Mix, 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 it's your workout. Yum, I can smell the bananas. I don't know why, banana bread's just good. You can have, have it in the evening with a cup of tea, you can just have it in the morning with a cup of coffee. Okay, so next we're gonna put three quarters of a cup of nuts, which, you know, when it comes to the fattening nuts, <laughs> Less is probably more, but I just kind of wing it. I don't like to break them too small because when I'm eating the bite, I just like to get a big bite of nuts. So I'm gonna put the nuts in there last. I'm gonna stir it up a little bit, just a little bit. Now I'm gonna pour it all into one nine inch buttered loaf pan. Cause you don't want it to stick. That's like a pain in the butt when you're like, go through all this work, you make it, and then you get it out and you're just like, it won't come out. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna, I buttered the loaf pan and I'm gonna pour it in here. And I have to say, I think the nuts are heavy and they all sink right to the bottom. Okay, it's ready. I'm gonna put it in the oven now. I have the oven preheated to 350. I'm gonna put it in there and then I'm gonna bake it for 65 minutes. Here it is, look at that, a nice little banana nut loaf. All it needs is a little cup of coffee or a cup of tea on the side and you're all set. I'm gonna show you how to make a simple, simple no-bake cheesecake that tastes really good. What you need is Cool Whip. We get the kind that has no hydrogenated oil. We, we, we like to avoid that, so we get this one. And then we get the little tiny graham cracker crust, which just makes it cute because you can just give one to each person. You can also use the full size crust, so whichever way you want to do it. And then we use the Greek cream cheese. It's a, oops, <laughs> fell out. It's a little healthier, so that's why we choose this one. Also, two fresh lemons. Simple, simple, simple. You wanna get the cream cheese and the Cool Whip to room temperature. There you go, and then we're gonna put the cream cheese in here. And then I'm just gonna mix this in the best I can here. It's gonna take me a second. The cream cheese makes the Cool Whip thicker than it normally is, so it, it is more the consistency of you know a traditional cheesecake. Okay, now I have to put in the lemon juice. Ta-da, I have a little lemon juicer just so you don't get the seeds in there. This is a handy dandy little thing. 
I would say the juice of one lemon is enough. That's two ounces is plenty. Mix the lemon juice in. Okay, so now we have the little, the little tiny little pies out, little pie crust. What I want to say right now is if you think you might need it a little more sweet, you can add a quarter cup of sugar to this recipe. I don't because I think the less sugar the better and all this is plenty sweet. Okay, so now I almost need a spatula. Get it in there and make it look purdy. And it's just so cute that everybody gets their own little tiny cheesecake. And it's fun to make it. To make them super pretty and super fancy, you can grate a little chocolate. Make sure you put the chocolate bar in the freezer for a few minutes and get it really hard. And then just get a grater. So grate some chocolate, you know, get quite a bit on there. And it makes it look really pretty. Now I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator for a little while because they have to be cold and set in the refrigerator at least for two hours before you serve them. And then when it's time for dessert, voila, there you go. Okay, here they are after they firm up in the fridge for a little bit. They're fast and easy. They just need a few ingredients to make. I hope you give them a try. I'm gonna show you how to make this delicious homemade pumpkin loaf. It is so good. Everybody in the family will love it. All right, the first thing you do always is you put the butter in the pan because you have to mix up the butter and the sugar. One stick of butter one cup of brown sugar, and mix it all up good. Then you're gonna add your eggs next. Two eggs. Mix this in here good. Alrighty, there we go. After that, I'm gonna mix in the pumpkin. This is fresh pumpkin. One can of pumpkin, which is 15 ounces, or if you use fresh, I like to put 16 ounces in there. So then I'm gonna mix this in here. So then I'm going to add in all the spices and the baking soda. And last but not least, I add in the flour. A half teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of nutmeg, a teaspoon of cloves, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm going to mix that up a little bit just to get it in there, get those flavors congealing and congealing together. Yum. It smells really good. I think anything pumpkin is popular in the fall, so if you go out to get a pumpkin spice muffin or something like that, there are gonna be a million calories in that, and it's not gonna be good fresh homegrown, homemade ingredients. So you're much better off. It's very easy to make it at home. All right, next is one teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of baking powder. Now this is a quarter teaspoon, so I have to do two of these. Just so you know, it might look funny. Almost there. Last but not least, two cups of organic flour. That's what I'm using. You can just use two cups of flour. Whatever kind, but preferably organic. One more, which you can buy in little tiny bags. That's a good thing. If you don't bake too often, but you want to use healthy ingredients, that's the good part is, you know, they make smaller servings smaller containers of it. So you don't have to buy, you know, <laughs> 10 pounds of organic flour and be like, what am I gonna do with that stuff? You can just get a little bag. And then you can make like homemade biscuits, pancakes, you can make some pumpkin loaf, banana nut bread, you know. You can just make a few things and not be stuck with so much flour. All right, so I'm gonna mix this in now. Careful. Okay, if you're using a loaf pan, don't forget to butter it. If you make the little cupcake kinds, it has to have the little paper. Okay, I like to use a cup the best when I do the muffin tins because that way they kind of all come out even. And you know, before I didn't, and I would have like some of the batter in between there burning and it was a big pain in the butt. So then I figured out, if you do it this way, you can get it in there neat and tidy. And it works really good, look at that, perfect. Now these muffins are gonna be nice when you're just in the evening, sitting around with your little favorite person. You can just run and get them a muffin. 
and a little cup of tea or something. Or if you're busy, busy, busy in the morning and you just have to run out of the house, you can just give everybody a nice homemade pumpkin muffin and send them off on their way. All right, so it's a buttered loaf pan and we're gonna goop all this in here. This is nice, thick pumpkin batter. This doesn't really poof up and rise like bread does. Homemade bread, like it's pretty much the same size as it is in the pan it'll be when it's done baking. I have the oven preheated to 325 and I'm gonna bake these for 65 to 75 minutes. Here it is after it came out of the oven. I let it cool down and I took it out of the loaf pan and stacked it up here nice and it smells so good. Yum, yum, yum. I'm gonna make this healthy homestead diet cake. It has bananas in it with cream cheese frosting. It's very easy to make and delicious and it is for a healthy diet. You'll need three quarters cup butter two and one eighth cup of sugar, three eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla, three cups of all-purpose flour, one and one half teaspoon of baking soda, one quarter teaspoon salt, optional, one and one half cups of milk, two teaspoons lemon juice, one and one half cups mashed banana. For the frosting you'll need, one half cup of butter softened, one teaspoon of vanilla, an eight ounce package of softened cream cheese, three and one half cups of powdered sugar. So we're gonna turn the mixer on and we're gonna put the three quarters cup of butter and the two and one eighth cup of sugar into the mixer and we're gonna mix that on high speed until it creams. Mash the bananas in a bowl and add the lemon juice. Now I add the two teaspoons of vanilla. Can we do extra? Now that it's creamed, I'm gonna start adding the eggs one at a time and let them mix in well. In a small bowl, you're gonna mix three cups of the flour and one and a half teaspoons of the baking soda. If you opt to use the salt, now's the time to mix it in. It takes a long time for it to reach creamy stage but take, be patient and it'll make a really good cake. Now that the eggs and the butter are all mixed together, I'm gonna to start adding the flour and the milk, alternating one after the other. Last, I'm gonna add the bananas to the cake mixture. Don't overbeat it at this point. Just mix the bananas in well and you're done. Make sure to give the pans a good coating of a non-stick spray. Make sure when you put the cake in the three pans, you try to get it as even as possible. Preheat the oven to 275 and you bake it for one hour. Make sure you insert the toothpick to make sure it's done in the middle. It has to be completely cool before you frost it. To make the frosting, I'm gonna to mix together the butter and cream cheese. Those have to both be softened, of course. You're just gonna mix that up so it's all mixed together nice and creamy. Add the vanilla, well mixed. Turn the mixer on low and start adding the sugar very slowly. If you don't turn the mixer down, you're gonna have a big poof of powdered sugar all over the place. When I cook at home, I always try to use the best of the best of the ingredients I have. Grass-fed butter really makes a difference. The eggs are my farm fresh eggs, and I also bought organic flour. It does make a difference. Once all the sugar is mixed in pretty good, Turn the mixer back up on high and whip the frosting really well for a few minutes. Now's the fun part, we get to build the cake. Layer by layer, we're gonna build it and frost it. It's so much fun. Make sure the first cake is centered right in the middle of the dish. What I do, I figured out that you need three spoons of frosting 
on top of the first layer. If you don't do it precisely, what happens is you run out of frosting at the end and you won't have enough to go around the outside of the cake. I have a whole banana left over, so I sliced it up. I'm gonna put the bananas, a few banana slices on each layer. So just use three big spoons of frosting on each layer. Spread it out only on the top. Here goes layer two, and I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Three spoons of frosting, spread it out nicely and evenly, and then I'm gonna put a few bananas. Last but not least, layer number three. Centered, they're all stacked up and centered evenly. Three spoons of frosting and spread it out. I have just enough frosting left to do the sides. It's a big, tall cake, so you have to spread it nice and evenly and go all the way around. This is kind of the tricky part, but just take your time and you can do it. If you get a cake stand, it just takes it up a notch and the cake will look so pretty when you put it on the table. Presentation is a big part of cooking and it does take it up a notch. Oh, it's ready. It looks really good. It was just so easy to make. Anybody could make it. You don't have to be like a cook to make this. The hardest part is stacking it up and frosting it. I'll tell you how good it is, because it's three layers, so you gotta take three bites. It's so good. Mmm. I love banana cake. It is just well worth the effort for me to make this cake. I hope you've enjoyed all my easy recipes and I hope you give them a try. If you want to find more of my videos on Amazon, look for Becky's Homestead. Thanks for watching. Bye.